Namdi Azikiwe, the first president of Nigeria. Namdi Azikiwe was a Nigerian nationalist, journalist, and politician who fought bravely for Nigeria's independence. After Nigeria became a federal republic in 1963, Azikiwe wrote his name in the history books by becoming the first democratically elected president of Nigeria. His presidency, which was characterized by tremendous gains in the health and education sectors, sadly came to an end following the 1966 military coup. For his undying support of Nigerian nationalism, black pride, and empowerment, he is generally considered one of the key founding fathers of modern Nigeria. This video presents the major facts and accomplishments of Namdi Azikiwe, the man who tried to restore the dignity and pride of the black man. Major Accomplishments by Namdi Azikiwe He fought hard to end segregation during British colonial rule. In addition to his numerous achievements, Azikiwe was involved in efforts to desegregate the Nigerian football leagues. He viewed segregation based on race, ethnic identities, and religion as an affront to the blacks. And even after Nigeria gained independence, in 1960, he stayed at the forefront, fighting against people who wanted to use sports to perpetrate their diabolic political and ethnic agenda. Such was his pursuit of equality and justice in sports that he created his football club called Zeke's Athletic Club. The club was a place where people from all works of life, religion, and ethnicity could come and freely participate in the beautiful game of football. The club even won the Livus League in 1942. Following those successes, Azikiwe established several other soccer centers across the nation in a bid to promote national unity. Some African historians have stated that Azikiwe's football club laid the foundation of the Nigerian national team, which would later be dubbed the Super Eagles. He was a columnist for a number of famous African-American newspapers. Influenced by the famous Ghanaian educator James Emin Kwegyur Agre, 1875-1927, Namdi Azikiwe sailed to the United States to further his education. After a two-year preparatory course at Storer College in West Virginia, he enrolled at Howard University, Washington, D.C. In 1932, he graduated with a master's degree in religion from Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. He followed this up with another master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania in 1934. He briefly took up a graduate student instructor job at the university before working as a columnist for famous newspapers such as the Baltimore Afro-American, Philadelphia Tribune, and the Associated Negro Press. His time in the United States also saw him become a disciple of Marcus Garvey's political, social, and economic policies, also known as Garveyism. Founding member of the African Morning Post Following his return to Nigeria around 1934, he had quite a challenging time finding a job of his liking. After failing to secure a teaching post at King's College in Lagos, he turned his attention to Accra, Ghana. He took up Alfred Okensei's offer of senior editor at the African Morning Post in Ghana, formerly Gold Coast. As an editor, his professionalism was top-notch and beyond reproach, earning significant praise from his fellow journalists. He also took under his wings several journalists, inculcating in them a sense of black pride and pan-Africanist ideologies. He was a vocal supporter of African culture and philosophy. While at the newspaper, he used the nickname Zeke in writing many of the articles in his very famous column, The Inside Stuff by Zeke. Namdi Ezekiwe blasted Africans and the upper class who were bent on maintaining the colonial mentality. He was quite dismayed at their unwillingness to criticize the manner in which African youth were indoctrinated into thinking Western culture superseded the various cultures in Africa. Those ideas, Zikism, of his would later culminate in his book, titled Renaissance Africa, 1973. He also used the newspaper to caution against petty ethnic and tribal conflicts. In his book, he proposed five philosophical pillars that would underpin Africa's revitalization and growth. Those pillars are social regeneration, economic determinism, mental emancipation, spiritual balance, and resorgimento nationalism. Founded the West African pilot, after his exploits in Accra, Ghana, he returned to Lagos in 1937. He went on to establish the West African pilot in order to champion the nationalistic ideologies in Nigeria. Extremely fed up with the colonial system in the country, he set up a number of similar newspapers across the country to support his pan-Africanist ideas. His deep group gradually became a leading player in journalism in the country. They managed, for example, the Southern Nigeria Defender, Inwari, 
the Eastern Guardian, and the Nigerian Spokesman. Every one of those newspapers came to be famous for its community-inspired stories. Azikiwe also didn't shy away from promoting women's rights in the various women's sections of his newspapers. By 1950, Azikiwe's West African pilot could boast of about 20,000 copies on a daily basis. He established the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons. Azikiwe's West African pilot was criticized by some ethnic and political groups because of what they believed were his undue suppression of some political figures in the Yoruba community. His friction with the Yoruba group started during his time in the Nigerian Youth Movement, where he accused some members of the group of being too critical of the Ijibu people. Shortly after, he left the movement, along with several Ijibu members, to form his organization. With the help of Herbert Macaulay, he formed the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons NCNC, in 1944. He would later serve as the Secretary General of the Council, the leading member in Nigeria's struggle for independence. Following his successes in the newspaper business in Nigeria, Azikiwe gradually started shifting from blunt criticism of the existing colonial to several political causes, including Nigeria's independence. He used the West African pilot to call on the immediate political independence of Nigeria and the entire African continent. He drew inspiration from what the likes of Mahatma Gandhi and his movement were doing in India. Azikiwe increasingly became fed up with Great Britain's management of the Nigerian economy, including the wage ceilings of the 1940s. He lobbied for more social and political reforms that allowed for Nigerians to participate more in governance. Namdi Azikiwe was at the forefront of the general strike in June 1945. As the world descended into chaos during World War II, several African countries had started growing very frustrated with colonial governments. In Nigeria, Azikiwe devoted considerable amount to the empowerment of the youth. He believed that reinforcing a sense of black pride and nationalism were the most potent ways of achieving Nigeria's independence aspiration. His usage of his newspapers in spreading the message was so effective during the general strike of 1945 that it got the Nigerian colonial government to ban a number of his newspapers in July 1945. He was forced to stay away from the public after rumor of possible assassinations of influential nationalists in the country. From then onward, Azikiwe would continue to push for self-government using whatever means possible, including boycotting foreign goods. Campaign for increased power to the Regional House of Assemblies Azikiwe and the somewhat militant group, the National Youth Movement, fervently opposed the colonial government's revision of the 1922 Clifford Constitution. Those proposals, which came from British Governor Arthur Richards, wanted to increase the number of appointed members in the Legislative Council. Although it was intended to include more Africans in the council, the fact that those members would be appointed caused a lot of unease among NCNC members. Azikiwe felt that the loyalty those appointed council members would lie with the colonial government and the British crown. He feared that those members would be handicapped in the push for self-rule for Nigerians. Another bone of contention had to deal with the issue of Africans, not given similar opportunities for advancement as their white counterparts in the colonial civil service. Azikiwe and the NCNC made plans for protests to be held in the United Kingdom in order to raise awareness to issues facing his country. After the death of Herbert Macaulay, Azikiwe took leadership of the party and organized the delegation to London, where he met with the West African Students' Union, the Fabian Society's Colonial Bureau, and the Labor Imperial Committee. Additionally, he helped raise funds in America for his movement. He also had a very fruitful meeting with Eleanor Roosevelt, wife of U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, premier of Nigeria's eastern region. In 1952, Azikiwe contested and won a legislative council seat in the Eastern Assembly. He contested the election under the banner of the National Democratic Party, a party affiliated to the NCNC. His colleagues in the Assembly elected him to the position of chief minister, and later he became premier of Nigeria's eastern region in 1954. First President of Nigeria Owing to a hard-fought battle by Azikiwe and its colleagues in the various legislative assemblies, Nigeria was able to become an independent republic within the Commonwealth of Nations on October 1, 1960. This feat came after the British Parliament passed the Nigeria Independence Act. On November 16, 1960, he was appointed Governor-General, while Abubakar Tafawa Balwa was appointed Prime Minister. Azikiwe also had the honor of being a member of the Privy Council of the United Kingdom.
After immense agitations from the public, Nigerian parties in the various houses agreed to cut its relationship with the British Crown in 1963. Subsequently, Nambi Ezekiwe was elected the first president of Nigeria. His tenure as head of state witnessed massive amounts of investments in the health and education sectors of the country. Unfortunately, his administration was forced out of power in the 1966 military coup, which resulted in Johnson Agui Irunsi coming into power as head of state. Although the ensuing political turmoil claimed the lives of several top Nigerian officials, including Prime Minister Tafawa Balawa, Namdi Ezekiwe luckily escaped. And after two unsuccessful presidential bids, in 1970 and 1983, Ezekiwe would go on to live to the ripe age of 91 before passing away on May 11, 1996, in Inugu. The renowned Nigerian statesman was buried at Onitsha, Nigeria. If you have any other accomplishments worth mentioning in mind, feel free to share them in the comment section. Also, make sure to subscribe for more interesting content and click on the notification bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.